there and say, Mr. Marine, I gotta ask you, how are we all doing today? Yeah, that's better. Good job. This is a beautiful fall day here in Montgomery County, here to celebrate a momentous occasion for the state of Maryland. I think you all know that already, but just in case you don't. I'm going to tell you why. I'm David Votes. I'm a state delegate. I represent just north of Via Frederick and part of Carroll County in the General Assembly of the House of Delegates. And I had the wonderful pleasure of joining several of the great Republicans we have in here in the primary election last year for the 6th Congressional District and have developed such a close friendship with AMI in that time period. It's been a good two years now. And I got to tell you, I couldn't be more excited that we're here today because of um, what we saw last year around the country turned a lot of heads. And we made some people really shocked at the results of that election. And you know what? That election's over. So I want to make that point. We know that. We won. But for everybody else out there that's going to read any newspaper covering this race from here forward, that election's over. That election does not matter for what we're standing in this room for. What matters most in the coming year that we're about to start in 2018 in this election cycle are two races. And these two races are going to make a drastic impact on the state of Maryland. One is the re-election of Governor Larry Hogan. Yeah. Yeah. And the other one is taking back a district for Republicans in the federal delegation here in the 6th Congressional District and putting Ami Hover as our Congresswoman on the Hill. That she's proven that she can withstand the time, the effort, the energy, the battle, and put what we need most on the Hill through her investment in this district over the last two years. And she's committed today, as you're about to hear from her again, to do this again. Because this election cycle is when we take it back. And we do it by winning those two races together. Because with those, we allow the governor to redraw these lines. So once Ami takes it back this cycle, we never give it up again. Yeah. <laughs> and then we actually get what we don't have in our part of the state is actual representation on Capitol Hill from someone who cares about our state and the part of our state that we live in and represents us because they gerrymandered to get seven of the eight Democrats in there who are all minority party members therefore can do nothing for Maryland on the Hill. Ami Ober is going to make that change. She's going to win this election and we're all here to do that for her and it's a pleasure and honor for me as a friend and as a colleague. Ami, this is your race. Let's do this together. Thank you, David. That's absolutely splendid. I have no higher regard for any of the opponents that ran against me last cycle than I have for David. We have become good friends, and I treasure it. I also have some other people here I would like to thank. I would like to thank the Central Committee members who have lent their expertise to me over the last couple of years. I'd like to thank my husband, Mark, who drove 20,000 20, miles last time. <laughs> and also I would particularly like to thank the women of the Republican Women's Clubs who have been fabulous to me all along. And I appreciate their support, I appreciate their expertise, and I appreciate their laughter. And thanks to all of you for being here. It's, it's a wonderful crowd. I feel the warmth, and, and that makes me feel really good. I, it's been two and a half years since I started this journey, and I don't think I've stopped for a minute the whole time. And we have 387 days left. And, you know, we can do that. And if we all work together, we'll make it easy. I'm sure you know that the 6th District runs from here in the Washington suburbs 
all the way out through the growing developments and farms of Frederick and Washington County, out to the beautiful mountains of Garrett. Many people think that the district is so diverse that it can't be brought together. Well, I have spent the last two and a half years working to learn the district and learn what does bring us together. We have our differences, uh, but we have more than that. We all depend on the importance of the freedom to make our own choices, to live our dreams, and raise our families. We all rely on that, and we have normally tended to rely on government as an ally and a partner. And that's no longer really tenable. Uh, Washington is pretty broken, I think, and Washington needs some help. And it's time for us to change that, and it's time for me to be an instrument of some of that change. You deserve a government that reflects your values. You deserve a member of Congress that will wake up every morning and say, what can I do for my district? The things that I'm going to focus on, jobs, uh, protecting existing jobs, developing new jobs. I'm a small business founder and owner. I know how to do that. Uh, running effective schools. There are many people here from the Asian American community, and I understand how seriously you take our school problems. Both my parents were teachers, and it, education is one of the incredibly important things. We need to fight crime and gangs. I spent some time last week with Sheriff Jenkins from Frederick County talking about the movement of the MS-13 gang uh, into Frederick County from Montgomery County. We need to tackle this problem. It is harmful to all of us. Uh, we also need to deal with the opioid addiction problem. I'll get a little bit more into that in a moment because I've had some plans over the years on that and I've had some experience to bring. Uh, developing solutions to transportation. Not only the I-270 and I-81 problems that are being addressed by Governor Hogan today, but there are roads in every part of the district that need to be tackled. Uh, these problems can only be solved by using common sense and by working together. And I am willing and able to work across all lines to get things done. I was known in the Pentagon in my Pentagon job as a decision maker and somebody who could make things happen. I intend to maintain that reputation, believe me. I worked to solve problems not by asking whether they were invented by Republicans or Democrats, but whether they're good for my district. And that's where I will focus. I've driven every road in the district that people think needs improvement. I've ridden along with the police departments on their tours to learn how the world looks from their point of view. I've walked the streets and talked to business owners and to the homeless, and I think I can bring something to this district that no one else can. I bring experience. I've solved a lot of problems in my own life. All of us have challenges, and we need to bring the experience of what it takes to overcome them uh, to help other people. I've been a single mom. I've known what it's like not to have enough money. I have a nephew who is not totally able to take care of himself, and I've helped develop plans on how to handle that in the future. I lost a son once. I understand that pain. And I had a family member who became addicted to drugs, and I helped get him into a rehab center and recover. He's now a very productive member of society. But overall, I've been fortunate. My parents were both teachers. They helped ensure that I got a good education and built my life on that. And I want to ensure that everyone in this district and every one of their children has the same opportunity. And I pledge to focus on the issues that impact our lives, as I've mentioned before, the transportation problems. I will leverage the power of the federal government to work with Governor Hogan for the good of our state and the good of my district. Uh, let me talk for a moment about the opioid addiction problem, which I think is the most severe current crisis in District 6. Um, not only do we need better treatment options, and I am 
following very carefully the experimental program that's going on in Hagerstown today with the daycare center. But we also need to tackle it at the source. We need to tackle it with big pharma. We need to tackle it with the doctors that overprescribe because it's easy. Uh, we need to talk about the pill mills that are sometimes in the United States and sometimes overseas and the distribution patterns that they have. Um, I think altogether we need to tackle it from a number of angles, but I think we can make it better. And I commit myself to helping to make that better. Uh, Governor Hogan is addressing the problems here in Maryland, but he needs a federal partner to make sure that these solutions can work. And I pledge to be that partner. Another problem I know a little bit about, my husband's with a company called Qualcomm, is the provision of broadband services and things like that out in the rural areas. There are laws and regulations that help push in that direction, but more needs to be done. We still have rural areas out in the western part of District 6 that need to have more broadband. And there have been some initial efforts made by Governor Hogan to get a program started in Frostburg. Uh, we need to have more of that sort of thing, and he needs to have the federal government behind what he's doing. And I will work with him to get that all successfully achieved. So ultimately what I'm saying today is that I pledge myself to help my district and to work on behalf of all the citizens in Congressional District 6. So I am therefore announcing my candidacy here. And <laughs> Thank you.